Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz and welcome to our regular weekly currencies report. Never a dull moment. I'm back in the chair and good to see you again, Dan. Welcome uh, back. Plenty of action in the currencies markets this week again, particularly with the New Zealand dollar. And we'll go straight to it because there's been a big move in the last day or two with the New Zealand dollar breaking out of its range. Let's have a look at what's happening in the chart here. You can explain to us uh, the importance of this move we've seen in the last couple of days. What happened to that range and why did we break out of it? Yeah, so we've been in a range for quite a few months there. If you see, you know, from really the um, the beginning of um, sort of March, um, but even going back further, you know, since the end of January, uh, we've been sort of trading between sort of 80, 50, and although we've been as high as 84, really over the last few weeks, we've been trading between 80, 50, and as high as sort of 83. Um, and that's been, that's been the case uh, over the last few weeks. But over the last 24 hours, we saw a drop in New Zealand dollar under 80 cents. So first time we've been down there in about four months. And what, what happened? Why? Well, a combination of things, really. Um, yesterday, we saw um, the headline unemployment rate in New Zealand spike up to 6.7%, which was unexpected. Um, looking at that number, obviously, the participation rate has increased. And some of the economists have, have actually pointed that the, um, the employment situation in New Zealand isn't all that bad, but that headline number, you know, gave um, traders a, an excuse, I think, to sell the New Zealand dollar. Um, and I think we've seen this ongoing weakness also in commodity prices really starting to show up. We saw Fonterra's milk auction this week um, weaker again, following uh, weakness in their previous auction. We had the ANZ commodity price index out for April this week, which had another 4.5% drop. Uh, and we've seen this, this ongoing weakness in commodity prices, yet the New Zealand dollar has held up remarkably yes, well. it's been a lagged approach. You know, the commodity prices have fallen, everyone said, right, time for the currency to fall, but it hasn't. But it looks like it's just sort of broken through. It is, yeah. So we're playing a little bit of catch-up overall. Um, so the Kiwi dollar opened this week up over 82 cents on Monday. So to drop under 80 cents is quite a big move, considering we've been stuck in this range. And from a, a technical sort of trading point of view, I suppose a lot of people look at these key levels of, of support and resistance and, and these key psychological levels. A break under 80 cents is quite important. And if we continue to see the New Zealand dollar drop from here, if we see it drop under 79.80 and close under 79.80, um, we, uh, we could see it continue to drift lower back into the sort of mid-70s, um, which is where we were back in um, October, November last year. So looking at also at the other big news this week, the Australian Reserve Bank cut its official cash rate by a full half a percentage point, mm -hmm. about double what people were expecting. That's right. What impact did that have on currency markets, the Australian dollar, and the New Zealand versus the Australian dollar? Yeah. So the Reserve Bank of Australia um, unexpectedly cut interest rates by 50 basis points on Tuesday. They were, they were expected to cut by 25 points. Um, that saw the Australian dollar drop a cent uh, against the US dollar. It saw the New Zealand dollar strengthen against the Australian dollar in the short term. But overall, the market had been pricing in 100 basis points of rate cuts from the Reserve Bank of Australia prior to that announcement. Now, the RBA have basically come out and said inflation is, is, is lower than expected in their um, quarterly financial um, update today. Um, monetary policy statement, they've basically um, lowered their forecast for GDP in Australia by half a percentage point this things, year. Things are tough in the Australian economy, aren't they? Yeah. Except for, for everything except for mining. Well, that's right. And, um, you know, we looked at uh, a PMI number out of Australia this week had almost every sector, um, you know, in a contraction mode. So, you know, outside of uh, the mining, uh, the mining investment boom, there's really not a lot of, um, of, of, of positive news out of Australia. So the RBA's cut rates, um, that's seen uh, Australian government bonds, for example, the yields on, on Australian government bonds get to historical lows, all-time historical lows. And that's flowed through to New Zealand wholesale interest rates too. Well, They've also hit lows. The ex ex exactly. And I think um, New Zealand interest rates um, tend, to, um, t t tend to have quite a high correlation with, with Australia. Um, so if, if Australia's interest rates are, uh, yields are, he are heading lower, typically you're going to see that reflected in New Zealand. And we've seen that reflected in New Zealand over the last week or so, um, after the Reserve Bank's decision last week, where they basically opened the door to a potential rate cut if the New Zealand dollar you know, continues to stay strong, we have seen the market really change their pricing for the uh, OCR. And, and in fact, in the short term, you know, the market is almost pricing in a rate cut. 
So That's amazing, isn't it? From just a few months ago when people were actively talking about a rate increase. Mm, that's right. So, I mean, that's having an impact on the New Zealand dollar. So, you know, given our yields are, are, are lower now, it, it's less attractive for investors to, to hold our currency. And with commodity prices going lower, again, investors are looking at the overall situation and picture and saying, well, you know, maybe it's not such a good idea to be, to be holding Kiwi dollars, even though we're still paying a little bit of a premium over a lot of other currencies. The other big move for the New Zealand dollar was against the pound this week, mm. uh, under uh, 50 uh, p uh, for the pound. Uh, tell us what's going on here. It's an interesting one because overall the situation in the UK is far from great, yet I think again um, we've seen quite a lot of strength in the New Zealand dollar versus the pound over the last uh, over the last year or so. We we got to almost um, you know, all-time highs again earlier this year, up over 0.53. Uh, and since then we've been trending lower. And again, it's a story of these weaker commodity prices. I think a lot of negative news was already priced into the UK economy. Uh, the UK's um, um, monetary policy settings have been extremely low and they've, they've been undertaking their own quantitative easing. Um, but the expectation is that they won't, be, um, you know, they won't be following through with more QE going forward, that they'll leave the settings as they are for the time being. And we've seen bits and pieces of better news out of the UK despite the fact that they recorded another negative quarter of economic growth. A lot of economists are actually skimming over that and thinking that perhaps things are starting to, 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 um, to improve in the UK. Now, I've just come back from Europe and spent quite a few euros painfully in the last uh, few few weeks and uh, kept an eye on what was happening to that exchange rate. Um, it seemed expensive, but in, in relative terms from a year ago, the New Zealand dollar has been stronger against the euro. But how, how has it gone in the last week or so? Yeah, well, again, we're weaker against the euro, uh, again, despite the, the big concerns that we continue to have about the European debt crisis. Um, we've been seeing the yields on, on Spanish and Italian bond, bond yields continue to go up. So despite the fact that the market is prepared to buy these, these government bonds, um, they're asking for a pretty big premium to hold on to them. And we've seen those Spanish bond yields push up over 6%. And as everyone knows, Spain has, has some massive issues with uh, unemployment over 20%. Um, and the youth unemployment over 50%. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just not a good recipe, is it? Youth unemployment... Uh, over 50%, so you know a lot of young people, you can imagine a lot of political pressure starting to build up in Spain uh, and still they're, they're, they're being asked to swallow some, some pretty heavy austerity measures. So um, you know Spain is, is a big one to watch. Um, and France, uh, with the elections, the second round of the presidential elections this weekend, also one to watch on the politics front. Yeah, well that's right, it looks like Sarkozy will uh, be getting the boot. Um, and uh, they'll be um, they'll be putting in a, a, a socialist um, a leader into into the France into the French um, Parliament, so that could be interesting. How the the I mean France is the other you know superpower I suppose in in the, in the European region, France and Germany, um, and whether or not that has any impact on this movement towards more fiscal unity in Europe. Um, obviously, you know the, the new leaders in France are going to have their own opinions and ideas. Uh, and things in France uh, you know, and, and their own economy still aren't that great either. So, yeah, some, some pretty big political risks there. We've also got an election in, in Greece this, um, this, this week as well. So, good, see what happens good on to the watch. front. And uh, with the non farm payrolls numbers on Friday, people will be watching that closely. We've got our budget next week. Um, those are the things that people will be looking for over the next year. Yeah, the so. US employment numbers always, that non-farm payrolls number, which is re, uh, reported this evening at about midnight New Zealand time, market's expecting about 160,000 new jobs from uh, from the US economy for the previous month. Um, yeah, you know, the US economy, it, it does seem as if we're seeing a bit of a, a, bit of a slowdown in what's been a, a more sort of robust economic activity coming out of the States uh, in the fourth quarter. The first quarter is starting to look a little bit, a little bit sluggish. Uh, and this jobs number will be focused on quite a lot. Now, we've had a lot of corporate earnings out of the US over the last couple of weeks, which have been better than expected, um, but at the same time we've seen some manufacturing numbers that came out, the worst number since June 2009 um, for, for one of the key manufacturing um, indexes in the US. Um, so, you know, things are, are, still, are still pretty fragile in the US economy. This really has been a week when people have taken the risk off the table, and that's uh, driven the New Zealand dollar down. Indeed, yeah. Dan Bell there from HighFX with our weekly Never a Dull Moment report. I'm Bernard Hickey for interest.co.nz.